Um, hello, so today we are going to do something a little bit different, uh, focus more on system design. Um, and so um, instead of taking a big problem like design YouTube or design um, Instagram or Twitter or whatever, um, we are going to take portions of system design. So usually um, you you might get asked about a problem like um, design uh, Instagram posting photos, for example. Within that problem, you will have a, a subcase or a, or a question about how would you retry, let's say, for example, sending a photo if it fails, um, right? Um, and so that's and and you you will have that in multiple cases and so this is i think focusing on this is a lot more useful than focusing on um than fo than just focusing on individual problems do both definitely but also f make sure to focus on the subtopics and really understand the building blocks right and so that's why today we'll focus on retry patterns um and so what is a retry um so Basically, usually, most of, in most cases, you would have two components talking to, to each other. This can be a client um, and a server. Um, this can be two servers. Um, this can be two API endpoints. Um, it can be a client, a mobile app, and then a backend server, or a web page, and then a backend server, right? And so what happens is you send the first operation to the, the, the other component, um, and so you get, you get a failed response. Uh, if you get a failed response, you want to retry because maybe uh, the server was temporarily had a problem and it, it, it now is working. And so um, if you are lucky, you may get a success response back. Um, but retry patterns have... The way you do this retry operation um, can be done in multiple ways and we'll see um, what they are. Um, okay, so what are the types of retries? So the first one is just canceling, right? I, actually, I I would argue that we should not include this, but just for the sake of exhaust to be exhaustive, it's just to just cancel and not do anything, right? Um, the other one is immediate, which is basically, let's say the photo upload fails um, or a request maybe to to send a tweet f uh, fails, um, and you retry immediately. Right. Um, the second one is a regular intervals, which means basically um, you wait, for example, for a, less, a fixed interval. So let's say maybe two minutes and then you try again or one minute and try again or three, 30 seconds and try again. And the the other one is incremental interval. And this is basically um, the uh, waiting a short time before the first retry and then incrementally increasing that time between each subsequent retry. Um, so, for example, you, you may retry the operation after uh, three seconds, and then after that, retry it after seven seconds, so you increase by um, by four, and then you, you wait again and retry after 30, uh, 13 seconds. So each time, maybe you increase the interval by four seconds or something like that. Um, the other one is exponential backup, and this one is very interesting because um, is it's more sophisticated and it's used a lot. Um, so basically, exponential um, backup, um, you wait a short time before the first retry, and then you exponentially increase the time between each retry. Um, um, so an example of exponential backup is, let's say, um, you may retry um, you may have like a base and then um, some C. So you can see this is exponential, right? So you choose a base and then C is just the um, the number of retries you've done so far, right? So let's say we pick 2 to the power of C. So the first time, maybe 2 to the power of 0 or 2 to the power of 1, depending on which one you choose. So let's say the first time you, you wait 2 seconds. The second time you wait 2 to the power of 2, 4. The third time, you wait 2 to the power of 3, which is um, which is uh, 8. And then the second time, you wait, so 8 seconds. The second time, you wait 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. Um, and then, let's say, up to the 10 to the power of 10, then you wait 1,024 seconds. So you can see um, the, the time between retries gets increasingly larger. Uh, really fast um, and 
um so we'll touch on why why people choose that um but the last one is exponential back off with jitter um so wh what is that um, okay, so why do we use exponential backup with jitter? Um, that's to solve a specific problem. Um, let's let's look at that. So exponential backup with jitter is basically so we have this problem. Um, if we have multiple clients, let's say this is um, the component or your server, and then you may have multiple clients, right? Client one, client two, client three. Um, kind of four and let's say our server has a temporary problem that may be like let's say internet has cut off that's an extreme case or maybe a uh, database has a blip and then it will recover right but let's say our clients um, maybe this is um, um, I don't know a game server or something and there is a competition and they all hit the server at the same time right um, and they get the failure and try to retry and so they will all they will all roughly retry at the same time okay um, if we have something like a, a fixed interval or a, even an incremental interval or an exponential backup if the failure started at the same time and the clients call at the same time then um, then multiple then we have multiple clients that see their request failing at the same time and so they should try simultaneously almost at the same time and if we, if we have a lot of clients um then um then this can cause a load spike on the server um right and even cause maybe a further de degrade let's say maybe the load on the database is what causes the problem then this load spike will even increase it and the problem becomes f worse right and this is what usually calls sort of it's a herding behavior right and so w to avoid that that's where exponential backup with this jitter comes in so what we do is we delay uh, we introduce some a random jitter or a random value that causes the delay of the retries to happen differently on each client so what do we mean by that so um so let's say we said in our exponential backup we do two to the power of the n number of the attempt right um, and each time we wait by that interval and so with this random jitter what we'll do is we will um, choose a random value so we will say random between zero and our two to the power of the attempt um, plus some jitter value right um, and this jitter value can be a random value between zero and 1000 that we choose differently for each client right um, some people do it this way and make this the delay um, other people maybe another implementation is to do a delay like um, just the uh, two to the power of the attempt plus just plus this jitter value right and this jitter value is the random value between 0 and 10 for each client 0 and 1000 for each client and you can see if we with this simplest version what will happen is that each client will retry at different intervals because random is unlikely to return the same value for all of them very 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 unlikely and so maybe one would would have let's say value random value of 500 the other one will have random value of 300 um, another one maybe have random value of 80 and let's say these are seconds or uh, for example then uh, th then the clients will call really at different intervals um, and this one is even uh, better because it randomizes on these values here um, okay one other variations that you you may see as well is to cap which is called truncated exponential backup that we can build on top of this one um, and that one way basically where uh, we would introduce a cap so that our delay doesn't let's say if our delay gets too big let's say maybe a thousand minutes then the request will practically never try right and so um, you if we want we can cap um, the the interval at some specific value let's say w we we want max 10 minutes because otherwise it's not useful then you can do min of for the delay on the cap here and do min here as well for this value and so basically you won't get more the interval won't get bigger than cap um and that's 
just to make it practical, right? Um, um, so the version where we have this cap here doesn't have to be done with exponential backup with jitter. It can be done um, just with exponential backup and um, the it's called truncated um, exponential backup just in case you want to search and get more info. Um, and so that you could just have your exponential, which is two to the power of the attempt, but you have the cap value um, and you could have the min of the two, so choose the min of the two, and this would be your um, delay or retry interval, right? Uh, let's call it or retry interval. Um, and so with this one here, this cap, um, let's say you can choose whatever value you want, basically, whatever practical value for your use case. Um, um, yeah, so for example, for retrying a tweet, it doesn't make sense to, after 10 minutes, to retry because the user probably left even. Um, the uh, uh, It doesn't want to, to tweet that thing anymore or maybe tweeted it again um, themselves, right? And so you, you could just choose a reasonable value. Um, now, an important thing to touch on is actually when to decide to retry. Um, so um, it depends on the operation you are doing, right? So if um, if there is a likelihood that retrying will succeed when we re-attempt re the, the request, then it makes sense to retry. So um, if, pos if, um, if it's likely to succeed, then we should try. Right, but if it's something that um, that if if the response that we got back um, is something that indicated an invalid operation, um, then we shouldn't retry, right? Because um, let's say maybe um, we, we tried to. An example here is um, updating a database with a, a value that doesn't exist. Right. Um, let's say maybe um, you try to update for a user um, their phone number and that user doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense to retry that request because it will never succeed. Um, um, and so that's just an example. But um, in when when you are doing your system design, think about the request. Is it if there is, is there even a likelihood that, uh, of success if we retry? Um, then if, if there isn't, there is no point in retrying. Um, now, in terms of um, the the what when to decide what interval to uh, to use, uh, it depends on the type of operation, right? Because if um, if if it's a user interaction. Um, let's say um, this can be posting a comment, for example, then um, the interval should be short, right? Because the user is trying to do something. We want to give them feedback fast. And so um, the interval should be short and we should only do a, a small number of retries. You shouldn't keep the user waiting there um, like for 30 minutes trying to post a comment, right? And so if it fails maybe two or three times, just stop and say we are having a problem. Uh, please come back later or something like that, right? Um, or or maybe uh, just wait and repost or something, right? And so if say user interaction the here, then we want fewer retries. Um, just it makes sense, and then we want shorter intervals. Um, the other use case is if it's a long running operation uh, and maybe something in the background, right? Like a background job um, or a long running critical flow um, that we really want to run, uh, but there is no one blocked or no user blocked waiting. Um, and this can be also expensive operations, right? Then in this case, it makes sense to retry more times, um, maybe 10, 20, 30 and then um, and wait also longer intervals for whoever the d the service that we are interacting with for to recover right um, so this can be for example let's say we are calculating a pay for um, let's say this is Amazon and is calculating a pay for uh, Amazon flex workers right um, then that job if it fails it's important for it to succeed so we, we really want to retry multiple times um, and um, 
we can wait long we can afford to wait longer intervals because maybe not really long like maybe s- seven or eight days but at least we can wait 10 minutes we can wait 30 minutes and then we try right um so for long running expensive operations uh expensive or critical operations um then in this case we can afford more retries and longer intervals and so depending on these you may choose um you may choose uh, which one to use. Um, and also, like the case we mentioned here, uh, where we would have a, a, a herd behavior. So if you have clients that may retry at the same time, think about you introducing uh, some randomization, like with th- this jitter value to avoid your server getting, um, um, getting a load spike because too many clients are trying to retry while, while we are having a problem. Um, Um, now and just to go back to um, to this again a little bit. Um, so there is one case where you should you shouldn't retry as well. Because, so if if your if you when you retry the operation, there may be inconsistencies in your data. So basically, let's say um, th- let's say the operation is not idempotent. What does that mean? Um, it basically means if you do the first one and it fails maybe halfway or something and the re- you retry again um, and th- the retry, um, because the previous operation wasn't uh, did, had some side effects, you retry again, maybe you repeat something. L- let's give an example. So let's say we are, the operation just increments of value by one, right? Um, and does something else. So maybe it does plus one, and then it does maybe update some string value. Um, just to give an example. And so let's say our first request updates one, and let's say we had the value was zero before, and so it had one, but it fails to update the string, right? And then we retry again, and we update, and so now the value is two and then the string got updated right so this is actually the the one request plus one request plus one retry is not equivalent to just one request because one request would have just updated the the value to one right so our retry actually had a problem and this can be dangerous uh let's say for example updating a bank account uh, with a value then um if you update two times, that's bad. Or if you withdraw two times, that's bad, right? Um, um, this also can apply to even posting on Twitter. You don't want users to have two tweets posted because you retried. Um, and maybe, let's say, the, the first request failed just maybe updating some of our internal um, logic, let's say, maybe in just the part that failed was just informing uh, uh, followers about the, the tweet. Um, and the user ends up with two tweets on their timeline, so we don't want that. So uh, we need to make sure that our requests are um, are, are item ported, and if a failure happens, either we cancel the entire operation, um, or we don't even retry for these sensitive um, sensitive queries that are not item ported, right? So that's something to think about as well. Um, yeah, so that's, I think, a good overview of um, retry patterns. Um, there are, s- of course, some prob- some more problems that, um, like the, the server contention, where the random is good, but it's not enough. So there are other concepts like circuit breakers or rate limiting um, that, w- that I will probably cover in the future. So please subscribe. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, see you on the next one. Bye.